right, Algebra 1, Lesson 59, it's called Rearranging Before Substitution, and that pretty much is what you're going to do. Rearrange something before you substitute it into something. So, here they're going to give us two problems, and they say, use substitution to solve for x and y. So, that's the problem. So, now, they're going to give us a, and then they just give us a problem, um, x minus 2y equals negative 1. Then they tell me, whoops, sorry, b, and then they tell me 2x minus 3y equals 4. Okay, so basically you're trying to figure out what's the answer for x and what's the answer for y, okay? So what you, the very, very, very first thing you need to do is just try to get an x answer, um, not fully, but just x on one side. So I'm going to use this one, or you could do a y on one side. It doesn't matter. I'm going to choose one letter. And since this x is by itself, it doesn't have a 2 with it or a 2 or a 3, it's best to choose this one. So we're trying to get just x to equal some type of an equation. So I'm going to take this one, x minus 2y equals negative 1. And I'm just trying to get this x to say x equals blah, blah, blah. So what I want to do is to move this negative 2y. And when we move it across the equals, hopefully remember minus or plus negative becomes a positive or a plus, so plus 2y, right? So now this tells me x equals negative 1 plus 2y, okay? And now I have a semi-answer, okay? Because I found out what x equals in, in a small sense. We don't actually know exactly what x equals, and we're going to figure that out in just a minute. But you've, this is what you needed to rearrange so that you could substitute. Yeah. Okay, so now what you're going to do is take your x answer, this part right here, negative 1 plus 2y, and you're going to put it into an x problem. So since we use this one to find what the x portion we're going to use, we're going to put it into this spot. Okay, I'm going to move this. Okay, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to write 2, and where I see this x, we're going to write down what x equals. Okay. So I'm going to put it in parentheses, negative 1 plus 2y. That's what they told me x equals. So it's best if you want to put a parentheses around the x to show you what you're doing. Okay? Yeah. And then now we're going to bring everything else down. So since this is my x, now I'm going to bring this down, minus 3y equals 4. Okay? So that becomes our problem, and we're actually going to find the answer for y. Okay? Since y is in this problem. Okay, so hopefully you can see that this 2 on the outside in this parentheses means that we're going to um, do the distributive property. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. 2 times negative 1 becomes negative 2, plus 2 times 2y becomes 4y, right? Yep. And then I'm just going to bring everything else down. Minus 3y equals 4, Okay. And now hopefully you remember that you need to add or subtract like measures. Okay, so I'm going to take negative 2, and then I have this 4y um, minus 3y, or plus a negative, however you want to do it. So then that becomes plus 1y, and then I'm just going to break down the 4, equals 4. So now I've got negative 2 plus 1y equals 4. We're trying to answer for y, so we're going to take this negative 2, Bring it across the equal sign, and that becomes a positive 2. Remember that? Yeah. So now I've got y equals 4 plus 2, and 4 plus 2 is 6. So y equals 6. So we found our y answer. y is 6. Whoops, I erased the problem. What was the second one? B is 2x minus 3y equals 4. Okay. Now, that, these were the problems. Now, we found what y equals. Now, basically what you're going to do is put your y answer, 6. You can either do either one. Okay, so I'm just going to pick this one up top. So, y equals 6. So, I'm going to put a 6 in parentheses right there. So, now I'm going to pull this down just so we get this out of the way. So, x minus 2 6 over 1. Okay, so now I'm going to take this and I'm going to go x minus, and then this 2 times 6 is 12, bring everything else down. Okay, and now I'm going to try to get x by itself. So x minus 12, the minus 12 goes over here to plus 12, and so x equals 11. See that? So you would tell me 
that x equals 11 and y equals 6. Now, that's your answer, but look how I'm going to write it. You're going to put it um, in a coordinate. So remember x, remember x is first and then y, so you go 11 comma 6. And that's how you leave it, okay? And that's the answer for that problem, all right? Let's do a few more just to make sure you're getting it. All right, so do this one with me on your paper. 2x minus y equals 10, okay? And then 4x minus 3y equals 16. Now, looking at this one, I'm going to choose the y because it's by itself. It's the easiest to answer. So I want to say y equals something. Now, it doesn't actually have to give us the exact answer, but it wants, we just want the y on this side. Okay, so I'm going to take this 2x minus y equals 10 and get the y by itself. Now, because this is a negative y, I do not want to leave the y on this side. Do you see that? Yeah. I'm going to move this negative y over here and this 10 over here. Now, that may be confusing, so let's take it in two steps. So this negative y, to make it a positive y, I just move it across the equal, right? So I just have a 2x. This minus y, I've just moved over. Now this 10, since it's a positive 10, when I move it over, it becomes a negative 10, right? Yeah. Okay, so now I get the answer, y equals this, 2x minus 10. Now if it bothers you that the y is on the right side, just rewrite it. y equals, what does y equal? 2x minus 10. See that? Mm -hmm. So, and then it gets to the part where you can see it and like it. y equals 2x minus 10. Okay, so now we have an answer, sort of. So, that y equals 2x minus 10. That's what we're going to use as our y. Okay, so what you're going to do, I'm going to come up here. All right, hold the line because these are the original problems, okay? So, we found out what y was. Now, you, once you, if you use this problem to figure out what your y is, then you have to use this problem to put the y in. Okay, so you can't use the same problem, just so you know. So, if I tried to find this letter y and use 2x minus 10, then I'm going to put the y into this next problem, okay? So, I'm going to pull this down, 4x minus 3y equals 16. So, where that y is, I'm going to insert this new, what we found, this new knowledge, y equals 2x minus 10. So where this y is, I'm going to put 2x minus 10. So let me do that. 2x minus 10. And then I'm just going to remove equals 16. So the y, which was right there, I put in parentheses up here. Now it's important that I put it in parentheses because it was 3y. That means 3 times y. So <laughs> what I'm going to do is go this 3 times this right here. Okay? So that's what we're going to do. So here's what I want... Um, Let's go on and take uh, and go 3 times 2. Um, I think it's probably going to be important to go on and make this negative 3x, 3 right there. So this negative 3 times 2x becomes negative 6x. Hopefully you see that. And then, I'm going to make this a plus negative. Then this negative 3 times a negative 10 becomes negative 30. Actually 30. I just remember my rules. Okay? Two negatives, um, if it's the same, then it's going to be a positive answer. So, there we go. Um, now, what you're going to do is then I'm going to bring everything else down, equals 16, and then plus, and then 4x. So all I did is answer this right here. Got it? Now, I'm going to try to get x's on one side and numbers on the other, but I'm going to go in and add my like terms. So this is like saying I have four monkeys and negative six monkeys which would give me a negative 2 monkeys, okay? And then I've got the plus 30 equals 16. And then I'll try to get this 30 plus 30 over on the other side so I can get my x part by itself. So this plus 30 becomes minus 30. And that gets rid of that, okay? And then so I've got 2x equals 16 minus 30, which is a negative 30. Um, and that's going to end up giving us a negative 14 as our answer. Okay, so 2x equal negative 2x, I'm sorry, equals negative 14. So again, you want to try to get the x by itself because we're trying to figure out what one of the answers is. 
So we're trying to get x by itself. So since this is negative 2 times x, we're going to take this negative 2. When we bring it across the equals, it becomes divided by negative 2. So then we get x equals negative 14 divided by negative 2 equals a positive 7. So x equals 7. So that's important to know. So I'm going to write down x equals 7. All right, I'm going to erase this, all this stuff down here. So since we found out that x equals 7 on this problem, because we knew our y, now I'm going to go up here and insert um, what x is and use a different one up here. Okay? So we used this problem a while ago with our y. Now I'm going to go up here and go x equals 7. So where this x is, I'm going to put a 7. See that? So now let's work the problem. So I'm going to bring it down here just so we can work it. Okay? So now I go 7 times 2 is 14. 14 minus y equals 10. Okay? I want to get the answer for y. So I'm going to take this negative y, move it across the equal. So it becomes plus y. And then I make this positive 10 and bring it across the equal. And it becomes a negative 10 or plus a negative. How are we going to do that? Okay, and so now y equals 14 minus 10, or plus a negative 10, y equals 4. Okay, so y equals 4. And so when you write your answer, remember you're going to go x comma y in that kind of form, so we say 7 comma 4. Okay, and that is our answer uh, for the second problem. Okay, hopefully you're understanding it. Um, I don't see any reason to do another one, uh, but if you need to watch it again and again, rewind it and watch me do it again and watch me do it again um, until you're able to figure it out. So you're wanting to eventually get to a place where you have an X answer fully, X equals 7, and Y equals something fully, X or Y equals 4. So then once I know that, I can just put it in this kind of problem. 7, 4. All right? That's lesson 59.